Okay. All right. Hello, Stacy. Hello, Apple. Thank you for joining me today. And anybody who is joining in the chat, please feel free to put in a comment. If you have any questions for either one of these speakers, please feel free to put that in there. Um, and Apple, so one of the things I've been doing in the summit is I've been watching, even though I, I was obviously very present when I was interviewing you guys, I'm watching them again throughout the summit as we go on the days just to refresh myself because 28 interviews starts to blend together. I don't remember who I talked to, what about. <laughs> uh, but I'm loving the content even more, actually going back and listening a second time. Um, but Apple and I had done a quantum healing session. And at the end of the interview, I'm like, oh, everybody will know by the time this airs what happened. And I forgot to tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> So um, it was amazing. It was an eight hour session. Apple is extraordinary at what she does. So one of the main focuses I had, my left shoulder was really sore and it had been sore for years and it was rolling forward more and more. And I had been able to affect it a little bit with EFT, with cognitive movement. And then when I was introduced to Apple, I was like, ooh, this seems like a great thing to really just kind of power heal this. Yeah. And it, and I got guidance in the session and followed that guidance. And within a few days uh, and following Apple's guidance as well, she followed up with me time and time again. She checked in on me almost daily the week after wow. the session to make sure that I was still integrating everything and following it so that I got the most out of that as possible. And my shoulder doesn't hurt anymore. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So there were lots of other things that happened, but that was probably the the pain that was the most aggravating at the time because it was the only thing that was bothering me like everything right. else in the body had been resolved and you know apple i thought about this later when i went into um like when we were scanning my body and asking what needs to be healed nothing came up for my back and that was the crux of pain for me years ago so that was and my back's fine just fyi so but yeah i thought that was pretty extraordinary that is extraordinary. Wonderful to hear. I'm so glad that I receive what you deserve. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, for anybody who is joining, just say hello in the chat. Let us know you're there. Um, today's prize is going to be Stacy's amazing book, Empower Yourself. I got a copy for myself too, just to <laughs> closure. Um, so this is going to be the freebie that you guys get today. Both guests also offered amazing freebies as well. So those are in the freebie pages. You can grab those directly out of the summit recording. I put the link in here since we had a little tech glitch and the emails went out kind of late today. But for those of you who are listening, it's going to be the same as last night. Just put a comment in this video. It doesn't matter if you're watching it live or you watch the recording. As long as you watch it by tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., you get a chance to win a prize. And Kimmy Shields won Dr. Park's book yesterday. So we'll see who wins Stacy's book today. How exciting. <laughs> yes. So we don't have anyone coming in yet. So um, I'd, I'd love to know more about the quantum healing because I've heard about the concept that I've never really dug deep into it. And I'd love to learn more about it because I, I have some terrible shoulder pain that I'm dealing with. And that sounds like amazing. When, when you mentioned that and you mentioned your recovery. Oh my gosh. I, I'd love to learn more about that. Yeah. And it's it's not rolled forward anymore, Stacy. Like maybe, maybe a smidge, but that's probably just normal alignment for me. But there's, there's no pain. Like I haven't been able to lay on my left side without pain for years until wow. working with Apple. So yeah. So Apple, please take the floor and tell us more. I know we, you talked about it pretty extensively in your interview, but for those who may not have had a chance to watch it yet, um, would love for you to just take the floor and tell Stacy and anybody else watching about quantum healing and what it can do. Sure. Quantum healing is a advanced storytelling technique. As you share your life story, we begin to heal the body. Now, the body is a messenger. Each part is trying to tell us something. Right. For shoulder in general it's the ability to receive love to give love mm -hmm. and often is related to past events that we experienced maybe this life but it could also be from this past life mm -hmm. 
Right. And also, if it's a new lesson, then it's incorporated in the soul plan. And this advanced storytelling session experience allows you to connect to the subconscious mind, which is all part of the universal consciousness. When you connect it, you will be able to download the divine energy, wisdom, and answers within for all of the symptoms, pain, trauma, and sadness, guilt, shame, whatever emotions we have or experience in the body, we have all the answers within. But sometimes the body just does not put all the dots together. Right. We didn't think that, oh, this body condition is actually related with guilt, with shame, with those emotions, you know, some of the trauma we consciously we might think we have already healed. We don't have to worry about it anymore. And often when we do the session, it will surface. Because you come to the space that number one, you feel safe. Number two, you feel understood. Yeah. And that is important for you to know you have the answers within. And the reason that when we see all different kind of uh, therapists, we didn't get complete healing is we haven't got deep enough yet. Right. We have not got the access open, the hidden emotions, because we're working at the level, working at the physical level. So we have the physical body where we're talking right now, conscious decision. Then yeah. we have the emotional body. Then we have the spirit body, energetic mm -hmm. body. Right. We also have the mental body. So mm -hmm. there are different layers of healing. And often when we do such a long session, the conscious mind will get exhausted. And that's to the point your conscious barrier will begin to dissolve. When your conscious barrier dissolves, you're ready to delve a little bit deeper. So the therapist will pave the way naturally so you feel comfortable to allow that the inner hidden emotion to surface. So feeling safe is very important. And now I incorporate the advanced conversation the hypnosis technique. Healing happens as I ask the question because we ask the question that none of other therapists would ask. Right. We would ask, who is benefiting from this situation? People, conscious of mind, will think, I'm not benefiting from it. Well, then who is stopping you to make the change? With a conventional healing method, we try to give the clients a solution, but yeah. the solution always comes from the clients themselves. I actually did not heal Katie, but I breached. I guided her to connect to the resources that is within herself. And this comes so powerful because if we can teach everybody to do that. Yes. And then we are creating a better world. That sounds amazing. May, may it I does require question? a bit of a, um, honesty. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Please. I was just wondering, after you had the eight-hour session with Katie, did you actually um, give her like exercises or things she needed to go home and still do, or it, it all happened within that eight-hour session? The first three to four hours is interview to understand the client's story. Okay. As the clients unfold their life stories, I begin. I have certain idea, but it's the healing does not come because I know what's happening, and then trying to it trying to tell her, give her what I know. It's gotcha. through asking the question strategically or wisely, and allow her to understand. Oh, that's the connection. I did not know. My father treated me badly, and I thought that I have forgiven him, but subconsciously we somewhat bury some emotion. We feel guilt. And often when it when we forgive the person, the perpetrators, there is element of self-hatred because we we're going to ask ourselves, 
why I did not connect it. You know, I'm so capable. I'm a healer myself. I'm a manager. I'm a boss. I manage a million dollars business. How such simple thing that I have not realized. So we do part of healing most current life challenges through the conversation part. As we begin to do the quantum healing session, then we actually understand the soul journey, what happened in the previous life, and do those past lives have influence, in fact, impact on your current journey? And what sort of a soul plan have you made? So in the hypnosis part, we do a lot of healing. We do the whole body scanning. Some of the pain, the clients did not even mention. When they came to see me, oh, I smoke. Oh, I have a lower back pain. I just want to heal that. And then they, they will tell me, my hearing, my hearing capacity, my eyesight to become deteriorating. And I immediately will know what's happening. Because generally with the eyes is the person feel, fail to see certain truth they don't want to see for example if the business is failing the business hasn't been had not been making any money in the past five years they don't want to admit this is not working for them and right. there's a lesson in it why the business has not been working and what is the lesson in it and people fail to see that fail to recognize the lesson so when we connect to the subconscious, the soul, your true essence will explain why this happened to them. Mm -hmm. So that's the healing will happen in the session. I will ask the subconscious, can you do anything about it? Can you remove the pain? And sometimes the subconscious can do that immediately. Other times it will say she does not allow it. And then I will say, what does the client need to know in order to allow it? They right. will say, she will have to let it go. Okay, she will have to let it go. And then the clients begin to, I can see the body maybe move a little bit, breath, breath change. The clients become very, very, you know, fidgeted. So this can happen during the session. During the session, some people can receive absolute complete transformation but others take some time therefore post the session it's required you the client to listen to the recording the session is recorded so you can listen back because it's such a lengthy session three to four hours just recording some people get quite fast an hour or two mm -hmm. so average of the recording is about two to three hours at lengthy and as you listen to the recording you will unfold new information because you are entering to a higher dimension a different state of awareness a new answer will come in sometimes not immediately for example weight loss or for example infertility mm -hmm. and for example ibs those chronic pain they have been holding for such a long time, we need to give the client the time to digest, to unfold. Because if the client just first time see me, there is a trust building process. They don't know what I can do, what this quantum healing is about. They also don't know they have the answers within. So that takes a bit of a time to allow themselves to really get Oh, I need to trust myself. They don't trust themselves because they were not told that they could have trust themselves. Right. Because we were not educated. We have the capacity to heal ourselves. Scientifically, the cell replaces itself every hundred days on average. Wow. And that means that we can heal ourselves. Yeah. That's science. You cannot ignore that. And right. what? quantum healing does it's just explain greater science mm -hmm. we have not got a machine or device to capture what is happening within the body like when i asked the clients what about the back pain the answer came so it's done when the clients are listening back they would just get amused how did this happen how on earth she took my pain away in one session I say, I didn't take your pain away. It's your subconscious address that because we have smoothed the channel. We found the reason 
why the body carries that pain. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was big. And, you know, and Apple, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I, I think with mine, part of it was, you know, my shoulder had been bothering me for about six or seven years um, on and off. It was so much less than anything else. So it was way down the list of stuff that I was working on, you know, with my own modality. Um, but part of how lessons really get cemented with me is the evidence and, and watching it heal over time. Like, and I feel like spirit was kind of honoring that part for me and letting me see the proof, you know, cause I would like, I think a day or two later, I was just like, gosh, this doesn't feel like it's healed yet. That's interesting. And then I just let it go. Trusted the session. Um, one of the great things is that you can listen to it like as you're sleeping. And so that's what I like one day I listened when I was out doing yard work. And then the other two times, I think uh, you had said to listen to it three times the first week. And so I made sure that I did that. And the other two times I listened to it as I went to sleep and I, and every time I listened, I felt better and better. And so I think there, there may be, a, am I incorrect in that apple that there's like an honoring of, of who we are and, and what really like drives us and motivates us and keeps us in that? Is that part of the healing process? Totally. Totally. It is all about who we are. Yeah. Now I'm going to do um, some workshops as I grow my business, doing group sessions. A huge part is all the small, small thing, because in the demo, I would ask the guests, say, okay, if anyone who's comfortable, if you have uh, some small thing that you have been struggling with, you feel you're stuck, you know, come forward. If you feel like to do it in front of everybody and that small thing always related back to the big thing. Right. Because every every small thing is who we are. It's part of ours. Right. It's all linked. It's all linked. Yeah. Small thing like you don't like the flower to be their position or the water bottle has to be certain color <laughs> and you only wear certain color of clothes and all these things. This all has something to do with the inner big self. Yeah. Once we truly understand who you are, as we unload, unwind our soul lesson, you just become a new person yeah. because the energy begins to shift and the perspective that we have about life begins to shift. Right. Yeah. There's a famous sentence that if we change the will, we see certain things. The things we see change. When we, the thing that we see changes, we don't have a problem anymore. Yeah. And very often in our healing, when we see clients, people will say, somebody did something to me. Mm -hmm. But with the physical condition, what the general public has not come to the awareness, it's always related with certain emotions. They always seek scientific explanation. They always think, oh, I'm getting old. You know, I run too much. I ride the bicycle too hard. I work too long. All this. Yes, these are the physical knowledge that they were educated to. But we forgot we have the capacity to question, is that a true? Whose opinion is that? Is right. that other people's opinion or your opinion? Mm -hmm. And each of our opinion is valid within our own sphere. But if you combine together, you got a circle of knowledge, I got a circle of knowledge, and Katie has got a circle of knowledge. And these three different circles, they are all part of the big consciousness. Right. So every person who is correct in their own area, in their own space, because we cannot question other people's experience and their individual experience hold 100% entirely true to them. Right. But why do we have a different opinion? That is because we have our, we create our own experience, our learning, our reading, our education, our community, right. our government system, economic system, it's valid only to me. But, but it's true because it is valid to you. Right. 
Very true. Yeah. I, I, and I think that's very interesting. I, I think it's very effective. I, I'm just, I'm re recently, I've been reading a book about your aura and how you could actually change the colors of your aura and change you as a person. And uh, it's pretty, it, it's pretty amazing when you, when you look at, tap into the spiritual world, there's so much out there, you know, and, you know, the problem is people don't do it, what they see, what they only sometimes believe what they see, but they don't realize how powerful the spiritual world can be. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I apologize for stepping away. I wound up getting a dry eye attack, which is very interesting, the timing in that. Normally, it only happens if I'm looking at devices too long and haven't stepped away. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> like As Apple's talking, my eyes are like burning right after she's like, you know, if there's a problem with the eyes, there's something you don't want to see. And I'm like, okay, what don't I want to see? <laughs> I'm just wondering. So my apologies for that. I, the timing, I, I just gets to a point where I can't even keep my eyes open anymore. So instead of staying here distracting and burning, no, Maybe. that's okay. It could be very painful, dry eye. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't really happen very much. It's been happening again lately because I've been on devices a lot. But I'm going to spend a little bit of time meditating and seeing what I don't want to see mm -hmm. that's causing these attacks. What do you do with that? The physical condition is you sit down meditating. You focus on that body part that gives you symptom and feel it and say, what are you trying to teach me? What do I need to know about it? And you will always have your answer. Yep. Yeah, I I, um, I do what is here a lot. You know, like I was doing that and there was so much that was here, which is why I was like, okay, let's do some quantum healing because that's going to be the fastest way to fix this. Yeah. Like this would have been like 10 cognitive movement sessions to do mm -hmm. it. And, and this is friggin' fast. This fast tracks things. We did some brain scans a few weeks ago and this can impact the limbic system um, very quickly. And I don't want to, we'll go into that another day, but um, quantum is even quicker than cognitive movement. So I was, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, that is very cool. Yeah, it was what awesome. What you do, Stacey? Oh, I'm, um, I, I'm a uh, speaker and uh, I'm, I'm a uh, 20 times a best-selling book author and I coach and I, my focus is helping people, um, both men and women overcome challenge and obstacles in their life so they could live the life they deserve. Cause a lot of times people in life, they kind of get stuck when, you know, we all go through uh, life and we have challenge and obstacles to endure. Um, but sometimes it, it's hard for people. They feel like they're dragging their feet each day and sometimes they get stuck and they don't know how to move forward. And I teach them, you know, ways, um, but different ways to kind of unstuck themselves where they learn how to actually gain the courage to um, move forward in life and to actually go after the things that they have dreamt of uh, actually doing in life. Because everybody has a dream and there's no reason why your dream can't become your reality. Yes, I love that. Absolutely. You know, and Stacy, you were mentioning something about, um, there were a few things I, I took some notes in here. So one of the things that you mentioned in your, your talk, but, and I was hoping we could just bring it up again for just to help reinforce it, but there were five actions that you were saying people can take now to start to help themselves. Would you be willing to share those again? with us if you can rattle sure. off the top of your head <laughs> sure so one of the things when people get into obstacles um they fall into um in denial you know a lot of people don't want to actually under come to realization that there is a problem because they're either they fear change or they um or they just they realize that if they endure this problem, then they're scared. What what type of person am I going to turn out to be once I overcome this art obstacle? Am I going to like who I am? Um, you know, they get scared. So you know, denial is a, is one of the first steps on trying to accept yourself, accept the problem. And once you accept the problem, you kind of move forward, and you have to learn how to accept yourself. And we have to realize that we live in a world that you know the media and you know kind of shows people as perfect beings but we're not perfect there is no such thing we all have flaws we all have something in life and we have to learn you know to accept ourselves for who we are 
and we have to learn how to love ourselves and you know loving ourselves is a big a big portion there are lots of people who wake up in the morning they look in the mirror and they don't like who they see well you know uh you have to you know accept yourself and learn to love yourself for who you are and then work on change and you know one of the the biggest things of actually accomplishing change is working on your self-esteem and working on your confidence level, realizing that you are special. You are a beautiful person, both inside and out, and not to be judgmental on yourself and to, you know, and there's different ways. I I, I teach it in my book also, and I teach it when I do live talks and, uh, and when I do workshops. And basically, you know, it's setting goals, short-term goals and long-term goals, learning how to, you know, create, create things, break it down and, you know, and to look at yourself and to realize that you have the ability, we all have power within us to accomplish anything and it's releasing that power. And, uh, you know, positivity is, is a big force, you know, the power of positivity goes a long way and people don't realize how strong the mind really is. And when you focus on positivity and you start to take a moment and I, I'm very big on meditation and you need to you take a moment. I, I tell people the greatest time is when you wake up in the morning to take at least 15 minutes of meditation, clear your mind, clear your thoughts, connect with your mind, body, and soul. And to really think about what in your life is holding you back. What in your life is actually negative, you know, bringing you down and to start releasing those things, you know, and sometimes it could be a friend or a family member and you might say, well, I can't, you know, push them out of my life, but you can separate yourself a little bit in a healthy manner. If you see them push, pulling you down, and obviously it's not good to have them in your life, but you don't have to shun them out. Maybe you just have to have a little break from them or keep it very cordial when you talk to them and to, you know, and the negative things in your life that you feel, you could just feel it's draining, you know, and those are the things that you have to start to get rid of. And you have to start really changing the way you, your, your life and changing the way you think, kind of retraining the brain. And when you, when you start doing those things, um, you, you, you start to feel better about yourself and you start to work on those short-term and long-term goals that I was telling you about also. And every time, you know, you don't have to accomplish a whole bunch of goals and you don't have to strive for, you know, to, to, to accomplish everything on the list that you created. Just one short-term goal, give yourself a pat on the back. You know, it, it goes a long way and, and it makes you feel good about yourself. And then you start to gain inner strength and you don't even realize it. And and then it gives you the inner strength to want to move forward. You see yourself progressing and that starts to bring you uphill. And then you start to see the energy and the power start building inside you. And then you start to really have to give yourself time to think about what is my purpose in life? What's my passion? You know, and I think it, it starts, you know, really with, with what is your, your passion is, is, is one of the main things. What do you love to do? And, you know, what is my purpose in life? And it, it's wonderful when you can take your, your passion and turn your purpose in, uh, and make it your purpose in life, make it your venture to actually do something that you love. And when you do that and you move, move forward in life, you can, you see a vast change. You're, you, you know, people start to start to ha be happier when they start to do things that are making them feel good as a person. And we all have, like I said, we all have obstacles, but when you start learning how to cope with your obstacles and learning, I teach different coping um, techniques and coping skills in my books and in my talks and in my workshops and, and, you know, how to just, you know, go through and, and, and move forward and not let these obstacles run us down because, you know, when we have obstacles, we encounter anger, frustration, sometimes depression, and we have to learn how to cope with stress. And I talk about how to deal with stress in life and how not to let the the big the little things in life get to us you know we we have to really live in the now people have to realize we don't we assume we'll be here tomorrow we assume we'll be here next week but we don't know what the next day may bring so it's really focusing on now like the past is the past we can't change the past so why focus and dwell on the past right. we can't you know we need to focus on the present and we need to really think about what we want for our future and how are we going to get there and creating a little strategic plan. And I have like a journal and it's called Positivity and Gratitude Journal. And I have questions in there to kind of space things out. <laughs> yes. That'll be another gift on another day. So, yep. Yeah. Got that in and there. it's 
gratitude is a big thing. You know, yes. people don't realize it, but you know, we Huge. always think we, especially in America, we're very spoiled and, and you know, and um, you know, and your country does very well also, you know, so it's like, we, sometimes we think, you know, uh, I want, I want, I want, I don't have, I don't have, but you know, sometimes when the littlest things are taken away from our lives that you didn't think were that really meant anything, we then we realize how important they were, and then it's too late. And then we so we really need to focus on the things in life that that mean that we have and, and focus and 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 have gratitude for them. Even going outside, breathing the air, sitting in the grass, and you know, being able to look at the flowers and to be able to just you know um, go have a picnic with somebody you care about, you know, and spending time with people and just saying a few kind words to somebody, you know, um, all these little things, you know, make you feel good um, and it gives you gratitude for just being able to be here because there's so many beautiful things in life that we neglect you know and we really need to focus on the beauty of life and not focus on the materialistic things in life yes I love that I've I've started this practice like if I'm because I'm I'm you know I've been on this growth journey for several years and right now I'm in kind of a lonely season I'm making another transition in here which means that you know much to your point sometimes people aren't in alignment with you and so there's a little bit of, of distance that comes in there and so what I'm doing, if I'm, what I've started to do is like, even as I'm driving down the road, I'll start thanking the trees because yeah. I'm pulling all the crap out of the air. So we have cleaner air to breathe and they're beautiful and they're yes. all these things. And so I just start practicing gratitude out loud and my mood, I can feel myself within like two or three. Oh, thank you so much, tree. You're beautiful. Oh, look yeah. at that beautiful flower. Just within naming two or three things and not just phoning it in, just like, oh, I'm grateful. Like, feel the gratitude yeah. inside um and just so you guys know i've been looking at another monitor here i'm not tapping out on you mm -hmm. um but there are some questions i had asked the group ahead of time what kind of questions they wanted to have answered during the summit we've had lots of responses and stacy and apple somebody named kristen oliphant kristen i hope i'm saying your name correctly she had had a question I think would be wonderful for both of you guys to have answers. And I'm guessing your answers are going to be different and amazing because <laughs> that's, that's just my guess. Um, so she said, how to keep a positive mindset. Her question is, how do you keep a positive mindset when you constantly have new and seemingly random health issues popping up that blindside you on top of your other chronic health issues? Stacey, you want to take that one first and then Apple? Sure. Um, you know, I, I go through this on a daily basis. You know, I've been through my whole life. I struggled with different, different illnesses and, um, you know, and even now I'm struggling with, you know, pain in my, in my neck and in my shoulders and my arms. And, um, you know, there was a point where I couldn't even hold a coffee cup and it could be very depressing when you have all, when you're struggling with chronic pain or you're struggling with different illnesses and you know sometimes people get very hopeless and they feel you know um very they get depressed and then they they lose the momentum of, of the beauty around us and so sometimes we have to really think about you know again sit down and really think about the positive things that we have in life and try not to, you know, and I always think that everything happens for a reason, believe it or not. And I feel like, you know, everything that I've gone through in life has strengthened me and has given me actually a, a better outlook on life. You know, if it wasn't for everything that I've been through, I don't think I would look at people the way I do. When I look at people, I see the beauty within. I, I look at people and, I, and I, I, see, I, see, I see the inside of them. I don't see the outside. And I, you know, I have a compassion for people that I don't think I would have had if I didn't go down the road I did. But focusing on the positivity of things is focusing on, on what I do have and the things I'm going through in life. Well, what are they doing right now besides giving me pain, besides causing me these problems? Is it, is it helping you see life in a different aspect? Are you feeling, are, is, is it making you stronger? Is it making you look at life differently? You know, are you developing certain support systems with people that actually are making you see things from a different view? Because sometimes when you speak with other people and you get an unbiased view and they understand what you're going through, it could actually be very supportive and very helpful because they sometimes open your eyes up and just making lists of different positive things going on in your life 
and, and focusing again on gratitude. You know, where I feel like, you know, to me, I, I look at this life as a boot camp. And I feel like in the, when we when we cross over to the spiritual world, you know, they're preparing us here for a reason. And I really do feel there is something waiting on the other side. And we are learning right now. We all are learning and we all are going through everything for a reason. We've all gotten down the journey. We are going down for a specific reason. And that's my point of view. I, you know, I really do think that each of us have journeyed down this pathway for a reason. There is a reason for everything. I love that. Thank you. And Apple, what would you say to Kristen to help stay positive? That was a beautiful answer, Stacey. I don't want to share with that. That was, <laughs> thank you for taking the time on that as well. Um, so Apple, what would you say to Kristen who's feels like she's getting plagued with lots of different health issues coming up over and over again. Number one, I wanted to say you can be absolutely, completely pain-free. Now, this summit, Katie is doing is amazing work that has all these experts come here. Any one of them, if you follow it, the advice, or try any session with anyone that you feel connected with, you get some improvement. The challenge came to do we follow through the advice you perhaps have heard many many advice already do we follow it through do we believe in it mm -hmm. and when we state we all have the ability to heal why those pain keeps on coming back what are we trying to learn from it what does this physical condition trying to teach us there is yeah. always an emotion behind those physical condition. Yes. Maybe something we don't know. Maybe something we thought consciously we have already addressed. Maybe from a past life. I had a client who had narcolepsy condition. Medical cannot heal that. So in the session, it came to it was from a past life head injury. The soul energy carried that soul into this life. So the soul chose to have this condition to learn to live a life very differently. Dyslexia. Uh, many of my clients have this condition, surprisingly. I did not know. They came with a different symptom. But dyslexia would pop up in the session because I'm speaking to the soul. I, would, I just knew what to ask in the session. And all this stuff came out. And they would specifically tell me they chose to have this condition in order to experience life differently. Yeah. So as those aspergillus engines, so we, we're going a bit far. So that's number one. There is always a way to be pain free. Number two, what is the smallest thing that you can do on a daily basis to make the largest change in your life? Uh, yeah. One thing. Okay. This one thing needs to be very specific. My clients will say, oh, I just have this positive thinking. Okay. What is the positive thinking? Mm -hmm. write it down i love myself i'm getting better every day yes. i know the answer within my subconscious will help me to heal i'm taking this herbal plant medicines is helping me daily basis i'm going to have a sound sleep tonight meditate people say oh i'll meditate okay why suddenly now meditation becomes so important is this really really important to you to be pain-free yeah right do you have a benefit to hold on to those pain there's a reason people don't realize and they have to go to the place from where you are now to where you want to go there is a place that a therapist we held and they take you to the place you have never been mm -hmm. the reason you have never been is you were not told you could be you didn't even know there is a better version of you could ever exist it is always exist. You can be pain free. You can be Stacy. You can be another version of Apple. You can be Katie around the summit. Anything is possible. Yes. Because a lot of those images, those self doubt, those blame, those excuses, it does not come from another person. It comes from ourself. Mm -hmm. when we're trying to run a business when we run a course when we go into interview we begin to tell ourselves oh, i can't do this i can't do this who said to you yeah right. who is that person behind this physical body and there's some part inside of us they are trying to protect us 
Mm -hmm. But when we come to the time when we grow up self, that the protection part will become obsolete, updated. So we need to update that. That is through new information, learning, and doing that very small thing to ourselves on a daily basis. No excuse. You have to be very, very disciplined on growing yourself. Changing the mind is one thing. Then you have to change the habit. The mind plus daily habit action together will create a new you. Absolutely pain-free. Love that. Yeah. And I just want to add to what you were saying so that, that what we get part, you know, that's never conscious. There's always something in there, you know, so one of the things that being in pain can give someone is a feeling of extra strength of being more of a badass because they're dealing with this every day. So if that's yes. one of the things you're getting source some other places that you feel strong. You know, and a lot of times, like we're coming out of feeling extremely disconnected after this pandemic has wreaked havoc on this world. It continues oh, to yes. we're seeing the economy, all this. We have never been as disconnected as we are right now, despite having so many ways to connect. And guess what you're getting when you're in pain? You're getting attention. You're getting someone that feels like you're connecting with you, even if it's going through gaslighting first eventually you're going to find someone who finally sees you and helps you connect. So those can be subconscious patterns that are running under the surface and a session with Apple can help you find that. Stacy's books can help you turn your mindset around in there. So I just wanted to add that. And then the other thing that was coming to mind as, as you were talking is one thing that I noticed after I had been I like I went through a run of crappy diagnoses, like, and it was like literally like one or two every week, like to a point where I just like, I got into a habit of buying some treat for myself every time I went to the doctor because it was bad news. And I'm right. like, hey, I'm going to run out of money if I keep doing that. But <laughs> the thing that was happening is I started to look for what else was wrong. And yes. so, you know, Stacey, you were talking about the neuroscience behind that. And Apple, you were saying that too, what you look for, you will find. That's why celebrating and having wins, even if it's like, I got out of bed today, celebrate it. If yes, you had a high exactly. pain, that's a celebration. Like, yes, I did this. What else can I do? You're right. going to look for what else you can do. But if you have been going through a, about like I did with shitty diagnosis after shitty diagnosis after shitty diagnosis, your brain may potentially just be looking for what else is wrong. So yes. that may be what's going on, Kristen, just go back into yourself and say, okay, I'm good with everything they've listed so far. We're good. We're going to start healing now and start to look for ways to start to heal, to start to shift that and slow down that process because your, your nervous system may have gotten to a point now where it's like, oh, geez, what else is going to go wrong? Right. It's going to find something. So yeah. what else is going to go Right. And let your nervous system look for that and see what happens. Can I make one additional comment? Please. Um, so there's also, uh, you know, I'm I'm very big at the, uh, about this and I talk about this a lot. It's connecting the mind, body, and soul. Our body always gives us messages. Our body is always sharing with us what we need. And it's, it's really connecting your mind, your body, and your soul. I am very big on the seven chakras. I'm very big on meditation. And it's understanding what your body needs. And when your body is is in pain, it's your body saying something's wrong. And it's telling you, you know, it's 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 a signal from the brain, you know, telling you that you know you you're actually getting the pain. It's signaling the brain, and the brain's you know signaling you and saying you have a problem. There's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then you have to really think about too is how have you been treating your body. Because I I've had so many people I've worked with that you know they think that everything is a magic pill and you know they're going they're getting these pills from these doctors and then you say oh okay you're taking pills what else do you do I say do you how do you eat and they have the worst diets in the world you know do you do any exercise or any stretching and they're not really doing much for themselves. And, you know, especially in our society where, you know, in America, where so many things are processed and our bodies are not getting what it needs. 
you know, if your body doesn't know what you put in your what you're putting in it and it's unfamiliar, it stores it. And if it stores it in your body over time, you're building toxins up in your body. And those toxins are affecting your organs, they're affecting your brain, they're affecting your clarity, focus, everything about it. And you're 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 making yourself worse. And then you're getting stressed out. 70% of stress causes illnesses. Everything like we were talking about before is connected. So you really have to understand your body, understand what your body needs. And you have to really put your body on a pedestal. And you really have to take care of your body like it is on a pedestal. And you know, people neglect their bodies and that's a big problem. You know, you really have to take care of your body. It is, you know, uh, it's a, if you want to feel good, you really have to understand who you are as a person and what your body, what your mind, what ev everything in, inside your soul needs. I love that's that. Yeah, beautifully said, uh, Stacey. Um, I wanted to compliment on what she just said. Basically, that is to stop the source of your problem. You can have all this mindset coach. You can have all this process, you know. But if you don't stop the source of the problem, maybe the relationship has not been working. Mm -hmm. Maybe the food, diet, processed food, the reason that it causes so much problem is there's no life force no. in it. No, we are. We are a living body. We are a manifestation of life force that yes. carries in this body so if you feed yourself fresh life force which is fresh vegetable mm -hmm. fruit nuts the fresher the better so there's yes. more foods of all this um program you can run in you know, having a lot of raw food or having fresh juice yes they just do good to your body and they're yep. detoxing very true and look at the when maybe work stress, maybe you have not been very happy with your work at all. You're doing something right. that is painful for many, yeah. many years. Yeah. And maybe there's something toxic in your environment. So mm -hmm. all these little things, what do you feed yourself? Body, mind, environment. So they all count to who you really are today. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. You know, and uh, Megan O'Leary added in the chat, you know, she said it took herself a year to actually be able to get herself to take control of her life. It takes baby steps. It won't all happen at once. So like with the example you guys are giving, if you've been eating Cheetos and <laughs> fried stuff and all the processed things that don't have any organic ingredients, or it's the last thing they list on the label, it's mm -hmm. not going to be an immediate change. Give yourself a couple of weeks. Your body is incredibly resilient. And as you change it, you are going to feel better, yes. but it's not going to happen. Like you're going to eat a salad the next morning. You're probably going to be irritated. You're not mm -hmm. going to necessarily feel satiated in there. So give yeah. yourself time to take those baby steps and let your body respond to the changes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it does take, it does take time, you know, it is baby steps and, and nothing is a quick fix. And when you hear people saying, you know, advertising these quick fixes and feel better and, and, you know, mm -hmm. in a week or feel better in 30 days, it's not like that. It, it, you know, everything is baby steps and it takes time. You know, the simplest little changes in your life, you may not feel for the next you know, three months, then you might start feeling a little bit better, but your body is taking in everything, you know, depending on what you're doing, what, you know, what procedures you're doing, what you're, you know, what you're doing to your body, but, you know, things take time for the body to actually absorb and you do get changes and you'll start to feel a little different, but you won't feel the, a strong outcome until, you know, time goes on and then things, you start to feel better little by little, and then it starts to build and build and build and build. Yeah. And sometimes you will have a massive relief in a very short period of time, but that's not an expectation. You're going to set yourself up for disappointment. And exactly. Frustration. If you go in and do that, like if you think a chiropractic adjustment is going to release everything at once, like probably <laughs> disappointed with that. You know, like what Apple does, that is one of the things that it is, it is very fast because that's part of quantum is it gets right. that linear time element when we're going into the quantum realms. That's the only thing I know that works uh, that quickly. That doesn't mean that there isn't something else out there that I haven't discovered yet, 
But, you know, Apple, you even said yourself with some people to media in that session with others, it may be a little bit of integration and a little bit of time on the other side of that. There are a few things that are going to determine how fast clients get healed. Um, we are talking about one simple aspect of this person's life, phobia, fear. Mm. Phobia can be done normally, mostly in one session. But um, other challenges, if it carries the entire life baggage, then that the client needs to take their own time to integrate. In the session, the most obvious thing is the pain relief is very fast. That's most clients who will receive 80 to 100 percent really really depends some maybe less but but the pain relief is quite obvious but weight loss i don't see clients immediately shrink for 20 kilo <laughs> I've <seen> that, <laughs> just so to speak so the client need to follow through the advice every client will receive answer towards their questions uh, why i continuously experience this body bloat you know after i eat certain food i'm bloating or i get up at 3 a.m i got a toe pain i got a hips pain hips pain anything in relation to the legs is about the person not moving forward it's not moving towards to their right direction. It may be the job they're not supposed to be doing. It mm -hmm. may be spiritual development because then we now we have a shift after you know COVID. Yeah, right. So all of this, but then if it's, there's a lot of baggage, there's a relationships not working, careers not working, physical pain, eyes, you know, some challenge, and all of those and childhood trauma, and some of the trauma clients won't even tell us until third session. Yeah, but a fast relief, it's possible, and you do receive a lot of relief. But it, sometimes the clients will undo the healing. Why? Because they actually don't know what happened. They don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. Now, to simplify it, what happens in the quantum healing session is we connect you to your manufacturer. The body, by science, is made by mom and dad, but <clears throat> by energy by consciousness is we going connecting to the universal consciousness which is where we actually come from because yeah. the energy go to the soul space and then arranges based on what lesson we need to learn based on what our soul journey is and then coming down have a physical body we actually choose our own parents we choose the physical condition we experience. This perhaps go beyond our today's conversation, but when you go to the manufacturer, you got all the tool, all the parts. Like I drive a Mercedes car, I have to get the parts from Germany, mm -hmm. and all these parts were not fixed for good. Yeah, because we are energy. Yeah, we go to connect to the source. You can fix the problem for good. Right. Yeah, I love that. Go to the manufacturer. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's not your I mom. Like that too. Go to the manufacturer, universal source. And that and I love that you brought up the the body mind spirit connection. You know, that that spirit part just can and when it can look differently for anybody. I know atheists that still believe that energy exists. It is something greater than you as some yeah. kind of spiritual practice, you know, we have a lot of people who are Christian who are really attached to God. That is a beautiful thing. Whatever works for you, there is something that helped you be here. There is a maker somehow, whatever your belief system is attached to that, it's going to help you through whatever it is you're dealing with. And just think of the world in general, everything that we have on this planet is a purpose. Like you said, the trees give us oxygen mm -hmm. and, you know, every plant, every, every, you know, the grass, there's a purpose for everything we have on this planet yeah. and it, life, you know, we, like I say, I don't believe in the world perfect, but you know, everything corresponds on planet earth and it's just too perfect. For, for a bunch of rocks to just come together and create earth like some you know some some theorists you know kind of say you know mm -hmm. it's just you know there is a higher source a higher being you know and they are finding even now they are finding traces that there is possible life outside the universe you know 
Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was a, you know, a Mimi somewhere or, you know, <laughs> you know, because, yep. you know, it's many light years away. Oh yeah. They've, they've proven the multiverse with science. There's mm-hmm. actually a theory that the sun is like, kind of like a, a, is the, the entrance into this universe. And we're actually a baby universe, which is mind boggling that we're, isn't it? First because there's so much out there. And then we are one tiny planet and we are one teeny tiny little person on this planet in this giant universe that may or may not be a baby universe with multiple other universes and parallel dimensions out there. It is mind blowing sometimes to start to think about. Um, Jean, I like Jean, Jean Champion mentioned, she says she calls it the creator. I like that one. The creator. I like like that too. It's a good kind of neutral term because not everybody is comfortable with God and I want to respect that. It can be tricky to respect everybody's religious beliefs. Um, Just know that even, I may say something offensive sometimes, I apologize. If so, I really do try to honor everybody's spiritual beliefs because I don't like it when people step on mine. And so I do my best to not step on everybody else's. We all have our beliefs. We all came from different places. We're all on our journey. We all have different paths and journeys. And I I love that you mentioned like, it's not perfect, but I also believe everything happens for a reason. And this world is very symbiotic. You know, there is a lot of, of give and take in there. Like if I hadn't had the experiences I had as a child, I wouldn't be doing the work yes. that I'm doing now. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know? And without some of like, and so there was actually a recent event where um, someone, someone I care for deeply, I want to keep this more anonymous because I didn't ask their permission to bring this up, but there was a little bit of an emergency situation a couple months ago. And I was supposed to take um, a ride along with uh, the police that I've been working with and join them. And that day, he had a very traumatic work day and I wasn't able to be there because of this crisis. And this crisis seemed awful. And at the time, it felt like it got in the way. But because of that crisis, I was safe and I didn't experience that trauma and it would have scared the daylights out of me to have been in the car with him, with what he had to do. It was a homicide, suicide threat. And the person had a gun in a high-speed chase. Like it was a no-joke situation. I have no training to be in that. I have no history to help prepare me for that. I have zero desire to be in a situation like that. Like I was looking more like for a ride along on friends or something like that, you know, like today we're not too much is happening. That's what I'm putting out there into the universe. That crisis kept me safe. Right. And that happens all the, and I prove, and I, it's come up repeatedly. Like that's been one of the beautiful things on my journey lately is I'm getting so much proof without even asking for it or looking for it, that I'm safe in the universe. And that is a great example there, you know, so consider that is whatever is happening for you at this time, what else is it bringing in for you? What else is happening? Like when you're delayed in traffic, is it maybe keeping you alive? Exactly. You're not going to be in that, that wreck. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, you know, uh, yeah. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. I didn't that, want to. Oh, no. that multi, that a multi worst experience that actually is part of the quantum healing journey as well. So people come for quantum healing for different purposes, and those who are very spiritually curious, we take them to experience the multi dimension. Yes. To discover what is out there. In fact, many of Deloitte Cannon's books that have already been um out there many years describing and revealing what is the truth out there apart from earth earth is an, an experimenting school for souls to come down to learn our own lessons and the ultimate lesson is love yes, yes. the ultimate lesson yes, is love. love yeah yeah uh, bill mckenna he's actually uh, i think he's up tomorrow he wrote a book several years ago called the only lesson um and it's about oh. love and it's absolutely beautiful. And for anybody who is interested in learning more about different lives, there's a book, 
I want to recommend, um, let me find it real quick. It's the, I think it's called the journey of souls. Um, Apple or Stacey, are you yeah, guys? Yeah, uh, that's Michael Newton's um, books. And I've, uh, I've also practiced his techniques as well, life between lives. So life between lives therapy takes the body, the person to experience the living in the life as a soul energy. Yeah. So yes. we go to past life and then go to the spiritual world. You go to the gateway, school, university, meeting your spiritual guides, your counsel. You go to school library and examine your own Akashic record. Then you have a meeting with your counsel and examine, have a have an appraisal performance evaluation. And then when you're ready, you go to the room to select your current body. Ooh, and you can see why <laughs> this is so, so incredible because you actually go to the beginning of your life before this life. Mm -hmm. You okay. won't be the same after you've done this session because you understand exactly why you do what you do. The people that you experience your family member, your soul less than your soul group, you just be different because you're connected, you're channeled. You now that energy initially for your crown chakra was not opening. Now your crown chakra, your third eye chakra will be just totally open, yes. connecting to the higher dimension. Because Earth is a third dimension. Mm -hmm. and the dream state is the fourth dimension. And we are transitioning to the fifth dimension. Yep. So th there are higher beings around assisting us to transitioning yes maybe yeah i i must have not asked you whether you did his protocol before this so that we could talk about it right now because I, I totally want to do another session with you apple because i love that book it absolutely fascinates me and i got so much out of my last session with you this would just be like just super fun like and i don't know why but it just sounds really fun to actually like to go like that that book is just amazing i'm actually yeah. i was gonna list give it a listen again recently i just got sometimes i get called back to books to go back to over and over again and that's one that that keeps coming up i have he to has a that. few books that's the first book the second one is the destiny of your soul Ooh. yes sounds good and then life between life therapies he actually explained it how to do it so the difference between life between life for the audience benefit and for youtube's benefit quantum healing particularly connecting to the subconscious and focus on healing physical conditions and also life you know all mm -hmm. kind of thing but life between life go deeper because the prerequisite for life between life is you have to do a past life regression session because in quantum healing, some people might stay quite light trance. And life between life, half of that is past life experience beforehand. Mm -hmm. And that will pave a way to delve a little deeper. Because it has a very long induction where quantum healing, quite fast paced, jump into the spiritual world, connecting to the subconscious. Because the subconscious is always here. The subconscious is with us 24 seven. Yeah. Yes. Often the audience will ask, what is subconscious? Well, what is subconscious? The guy running the show. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very true. Yep. That's everything we say, everything we do is the manifestation of our soul energy. Yes. Uh, Apple and Anne Marie Hammond is asking, how can she book a past life regression session? Um, um, if you are able to actually, if you just want to, is, uh, is it on your website? I can just put it in the chat for her. Yes. It's if you click uh, Apple Wang hypnosis and under the booking page, you can directly book through that. Okay. I'm putting it in here now. Anne Marie. Hip. Yeah. Hypnosis. You're watching this on Facebook. Yes. You'll be you'll be able to see my Facebook page, and click the website Apple and Hypnosis, and you will be able to see it directly. Yeah. Yeah, and I've I've done have past life regression before. I met Apple. It's it's powerful. It's very for anybody who's interested to do that. I highly recommend it. And Apple is actually I've worked with several hypnotherapists. You are the most skilled that I've worked with so far. You hold space so well. 
you know, and it was, it was kind of, it was really funny to me because it was, it was validating. It wasn't a negative thing when I was doing the interview and that took longer because so much has happened to me. Like yeah. two, three hours into it, Apple's just like, wow, I thought a lot had happened to me, but a lot has happened to you. And I was like, thank you for that validation. Like the, it wasn't a positive or a negative. It was just an acknowledgement that a lot has happened. Yeah. And it was powerful to hear that. And I think it's important that people realize that because we we all go through a lot of challenge and obstacles and some people feel like once they get through one thing, something else occurs and yeah. they feel like they can't escape it. And, you know, we, you know, as human beings, you know, think of us as boiling pots, you know, of water and the flame is under you, you as the flame gets hotter and hotter and hotter, you know, everyone has a breaking point. But if we teach ourselves how to retrain our, our mind, our body and our soul, and we how to overcome these obstacles, so we d doesn't let let those obstacles don't overcome us, you know, we can move forward and we can still progress to have a healthy, happy and productive life. It's so important that people realize that, you know, that life doesn't end because either you have a condition or because things aren't going well in life, you know, there is always opportunities. And if you realize that in the toughest times of our lives, you know, we, we thought, oh, we're never going to get through this, but we do get through it. And in the end, we always become stronger and better people. You know, it was a learning lesson and it, it actually broadened us and broadened our mind. And, you know, and in a sense, it, it helped heighten my, my spirituality, you know, and made me see things in ways that I didn't, you know, and, uh, I really think it's important that people understand that, you know, we can't overcome anything, you know, and, and people might, you know, some people have stronger personalities. Some people are a little bit weaker, but there are ways to train yourself to gain inner strength and courage. And I always say it's faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. And when you learn all those characteristics and you learn how to use them in one you know, such, such a change it brings to your life, you know, and, and life itself teaches you all these things. And the lessons that we go through in life is what gives us those, that faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. And there is always hope. And there was all, you know, and our wisdom is the lessons in life that we go through. And our strength is what we go through. It builds on us, our inner strength. And we all have that inner power. We all have the ability to, to go to higher lengths in life. It's just learning how and just learning that there, and it's not complicated either. And we could do it ourselves and we could do it with the help of others. And, you know, and it's okay to reach out. Sometimes people are embarrassed when they are going through challenges in their life. They don't want to share with others, but you know, it's, it's okay. And I think in this generation, I think people are realizing that and people are going out and reaching out for help more so than, you know, back in the day, we were always taught to be quiet about things that weren't going right. And now people are reaching out. And I think it's, it's such an excellent resource when you can reach out to somebody and have somebody help you, you know, and that's why, you know, coaches are here and that's why Apple is here. And that's why you're here, you know, because we can help people get to the next stepping stones and bring them to the point in life where they need to be so they can enjoy life. You know, we all have, we all have a right to be happy. And yeah. we all have a right to live the life we deserve. And, you know, people have to realize it is a possibility. It is there. And you just have to be able to utilize the tools that we have within us and you can accomplish anything. That was like a mic drop, Stacey. That was so <laughs> beautiful. Thank you for that. I just want to see, does anybody else have any other questions before we wrap? We've got a little bit over an hour, but this has been such a great conversation with you too. Thank you so much for being a part of the summit. Thank you. Oh, thank for you. Wisdom. Thank you for being able to join me today to go live too, to continue this conversation. You two are just amazing, amazing souls. And I'm just honored that you were a part of this with me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And you're an amazing. Thank you for having me. Yourself. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. All right. You escape in your mind. Yes. Gene, absolutely. All right. So we will go ahead and wrap this up. So same rules again as yesterday is just comment in the chat. I'm going to take all your names after you have until 9 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning. 
to just watch at least part of this. Like it did go a little bit long. I'm not expecting you to watch the whole thing, but let us know at least a little bit. And there's a lot of goodies in here. So I encourage you to watch the whole thing. Maybe stick us in your back pocket, go about your day and just listen with headphones or something because Apple and Stacy really brought some amazing tips in tonight. So thank you guys again. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. And if anyone wants thank to you. contact me, you know, I would be happy to answer any questions as well. If they want to go through you and then, you know, you could tell me, I'd be happy to help anybody, you know, go through those obstacles and get and move to that next level of life to bring happiness and joy on their and their selves. Yes, absolutely. So they do have links to your pages. Those were a part of the summit materials that they got today. So if anybody is missing that, please let me know. We'll make sure you have Stacy and Apple's uh, information in there. Actually, let me just go ahead. It's okay. Stacy. If anyone who wants to speak to me, you can book a half an hour free strategy call with me. Have all your questions answered. Yes. And I do, I do a free coaching session also. So if you want to go on stacychalami.com, you could sign up for a free coaching session. I, I, I will help you also. Yeah, that, that was amazingly generous of both of you to offer that. So I just put both of your sites into the chat comments as well, just to make it easier for people to reach out and take, uh, take an addition, say take advantage. That sounds bad, but to utilize the generosity that you're giving to get these free sessions. Thank you guys again. Oh, thank you.